All right, so we're going to be downloading and installing the Yi framework. But first, I want to I want to download a new editor. Uh, we've been using Notepad++, which is great for single files or if you're just editing a few files. But when you're dealing with a framework like Yi, you're dealing with a, um, an entire file structure, which you should have access to at all times. Uh, and IDEs, which are integrated development environments, they allow you to interact with your files easier. Um, it also has better code hinting, and it's just a, it's, a, it's just heavier than a regular than Notepad. Um, and there's a bunch of them out there. There's Adobe Dreamweaver, Eclipse, um, but the one I want to use is NetBeans, and there's no real particular reason. It's just what I've used. Um, I like the code hinting and just how it's all set up. So we're going to download NetBeans. It's free. So I'm just going to type in NetBeans in my browser. I'm not exactly sure what the website is. And NetBeans is also good for uh, even desktop programming, C Sharp, Java. All right, so it's NetBeans.org. I'm going to click on download. And we have a few different versions here, and they're tweaked toward the whatever language you're going to be developing in. So we are obviously developing in PHP, so we want this version. If we were doing Java or Java EE, we have these different versions, uh, C++, but we're going to be using PHP exclusively. All right, so I'm just going to save this to my downloads folder. And I'll select open when done. All right, so maybe it's not going to open. So I'm just going to go through this. Uh, what's this? Oh, yeah, we need the um, the Java SE development kit or the JDK. And we don't have that on this computer. So you may have it, you may not. Um, well, actually, it's prompting us to install. I didn't even have to go to the website, or maybe not. So I'm just going to type in JDK. Let's just go and download that. Show what's going on. Oh, so it's going to take us. We want to go to oracle.com. Let's just click on this link here. And we want the JDK for NetBeans. So we're going to click on that. Uh, actually, this is with NetBeans. We don't want that because we already have NetBeans installed. So we're just going to grab the Java platform. Just accept the license. And we want to download the correct version. I'm on a Windows 86. I'm on a 32-bit. So I'm going to download this file here. And this is 123 megabytes, so it might take a while, uh, a couple minutes. So I'm actually going to pause it. All right, so about a minute to download. I'm going to open that file. And let's run through this real quick. I'm just going to keep all the default options.
Okay, I'm going to choose the default directory. Okay, so that's installed. Now we should be able to install on NetBeans. All right. I'm going to keep the default location. We'll keep check for updates. So I'm not going to contribute to the project and I'm going to click finish. So now we should have NetBeans installed. Click on the desktop icon. And where we have a welcome page and we can start setting up projects. Um, let's do that. Let's set up a new project. and we want a PHP project and we'll call this we'll just call it ye and the folder that it's going to be in is going to be it even goes right to it it's the htdocs folder um, in our XAMPP server we can choose the PHP version I suggest the latest which right now is 5.4 and we can choose to put the NetBeans metadata in a separate directory I'm going to do that just so we don't have any confusing files uh, and then I'm going to click finish okay so now we have our project we, you can see we have our ye is the root document and then we have our source files which it, by default just gives us an index.php with an HTML uh, structure so now we're ready to start programming um, so now what we need to do is actually download ye and we can even go to the htdocs folder and you can see that it created that for us and we have this index.php and there, there are actually there's something I do want to change or just check I'm going to go to my xamp directory which is in my C drive and P, I'm going to go to the PHP folder and then I want to go to um, PHP INI and I want to open this I'll open it with Notepad++. And Yi uses a special debugger called xdebug. So we want to make sure that that's enabled. So I'm going to uh, do a control F to find. And I'm just going to type in xdebug and click on find next. And down here. Now anything with a semicolon at the start of it, that's it's commented out. It's not being used so what we want to do is uncomment this here this Zend extension which points to PHP X debug dot DLL so we just want to delete that semicolon now we want to look for the X debug remote host so we're going to search for uh, X debug dot remote host and is that the one we want yeah, so we're going to uncomment this here. Uh, 127.0.0.1 is basically, uh, it's the same as local host. So it's just saying our remote host is going to be our local host. And we also want to uncomment the xdebug uh, remote enable. And we also want to change it to 1. Where is it? xdebug remote enable yeah we want to change that to a one and we're gonna uncomment the remote handler and that should be it so I'm gonna save that file and get out of notepad so that's all set now we can go and actually get the framework so we want to go to yeframework.com and we're going to go to Downloads Framework. And we want to go scroll down. 
and we want the source code which is a tar gz file actually we don't want that we want the zip file because we're on windows uh, if you're on linux then that's another story so i'm going to download the zip file and let's open that up so this is the package that ye comes in and the only folder we're interested in here is the framework folder this is just demos requirements uh, change logs things like that so the framework is where the actual structure is um, and with this framework it's a little different because we need to put this folder outside of our web directory we're not going to just put this these files inside our e directory because uh, we'll get a forbidden access error so we're actually going to put this in our XAMPP folder so I'm just going to copy actually I'm just going to open up my C drive uh, XAMPP and I'm going to put the framework folder right in here Did it go over? Okay. Now what we're going to need to do next is we need to open a command line and create a web app. And we'll create that web app inside of our E folder. Alright, so now what we want to do is open up a command line so we can go to this input box and just type in CMD and we want to navigate to that framework directory so to go back right now we're in users slash brad so I'm gonna go CD dot dot brings us to users CD dot dot brings us to the C drive root now we want to do CD XAMPP and then CD framework. Now this is where we're going to create our com or write our command to create a web app. But there's one thing we need to do first. So I'm going to close out of this. We need to go to let me see here. See, go to the framework folder and we want to edit the yik.bat file. Now yik is what generates it, the app for us, all right? That's the command we're going to use to generate our web app. But we need to edit this. So we click on edit with notepad++. Right here it says php command equals php.exe. Well, if we run our command now, it's going to get an error because we need to put the path to this file. So wherever our php.exe file is, we need to put the path right here and we can find that in the XAMPP folder and the PHP folder I think it's here right here php.exe let's go to properties um, I don't know if there's a better way to get the file location right here C C drive slash XAMPP slash PHP. That's where this that file is located. So I'm going to copy that and go back to that bat file. And I'm just going to paste this in. And I'm going to just save that, control S, and get out of there. Now we should be able to run our command to generate our web app. So we want to run yik web app and then we want to put the location of our web app, which in our case we want it to be in the htdocs slash ye folder. So it's going to be in the C drive under xamp uh, htdocs and ye. Alright, so it's asking if we want to create the application. I'm going to type Y and enter. It's asking if we want to overwrite. Uh, we might have some files in there, so I'm going to say yes. And it should be created. So now if we go to our 
localhost localhost slash e and here's our web application so we have successfully installed ye on our web server we have a welcome page uh, we have an about page we have a contact form and we even have a login form so it gives us this shell uh, that we can use to work off of and sometimes we'll work off of this or sometimes we'll just totally start from scratch so we have successfully installed it on uh, in the next video we'll look into uh, configuration and then we'll look into actually creating an application